praise the Lord, we give thanks unto the Lord for he still is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Pastor R.D. Holmes with you with another week of boosting your faith. Yes, we are in the month of February 2022. And this time with you is all about boosting your faith. We call it our faith booster. I tell you, God is a God of faith and God respects faith. And as we told you last time, and I'm so glad uh, you're with us this week. And I want you to hit your share button. Share it with all your family, all your friends, uh, all your associates. Let's be a blessing uh, to, to thousands on this particular week for the next, just the next few moments. Let's be a blessing to somebody else. And also, I want you to comment. Don't be uh, shy. You can comment even while I'm talking and let me know who you are, where you call, where you're listening in from, all the good stuff. If I say something, you can give me some thumbs up. You can be interactive during this time. So tonight, of course, uh, again, we're talking about faith and we're going to boost your faith. That's what this is all designed to, to do, to stimulate your understanding of faith to the point you really want and desire to live by faith every day of your life. I remember that we taught you that the definition of faith that we're using is information from God. Information from God. That's faith. Faith is so important for the believer. I believe it's the most important subject now that you are born again. Now that you are born again, you, talking about you now that are born again, you don't really ever need to hear another message on salvation. Why? Because you already saved. You already born again. I did not say that we should stop preaching messages about salvation, but for you, you really don't need another message on salvation because you already have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. But the most important subject for you, now that you are born again, is the subject of faith. The Bible teaches, and we talked about this last week, the just shall live by faith. The just, y'all remember, that's me. <laughs> just testing, make sure you remember that. That's me. The ones that have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light, those that have been born again, those that are saved, those that are living for the Lord, you are the just, and the just shall live by faith. Information that comes from God that is so powerful that it can change your situations, your circumstances, and your conditions here in planet Earth. You need faith. Everybody on planet Earth need information from God to act on. So tonight, as we move more into our faith booster, I want to just share with you something that really helped me out in the early days when I was learning faith and living by faith. One thing you have to make sure that you are consciously aware of is that faith is real. He may say, Pastor, I, I think I know that, but no, no, this time I'm saying this. Faith is real. And here's what I'm talking about. The thing that you believe in God for, the promises that you are believing God for, they, they are real. They really do exist. And, you know, for every prophecy, every promise, every principle that you locate in the Word of God, there is what I call a faith process to bring those things to pass. But those things, and this 
hit me years ago, and I hope you can relate to this. Those things I believe in God for, they are real. Even though I may not physically uh, see them, hear them, uh, I'm not able to comprehend them with my physical senses. They are real. If God made a promise to you, that promise is real, even though you may not even be experiencing, experiencing it right now. So faith is real. The things of God is real. Matter of fact, the scripture says in Hebrew chapter 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, or the evidence, the proof of things that are not revealed to my senses. <laughs> Think about that. I have no uh, earth ram proof, no earth ram evidence of some promises that God promised me but that does not mean the promise or that particular thing I'm believing God for is not real. There's more to life, and I had to learn this out, and, and, and I'm pretty sure you can relate to this. There is more to life than what you can see. Let me let that just sit in for just, settle in for just a minute. There is more to life then you can physically see. For an example, I'm here in my home. I cannot physically see the cars that the Lord has blessed us with. I can't see them from here. Not right now, not in this seated position, but I know my cars are in the garage. You understand what I'm saying? I, I have, uh, let's see, Children, I have grandchildren, I got sisters, I got members at the church. But right now, in this seated position, I can't see them. I can't see all of them. I, I can't see them. But they do exist, don't you? <laughs> they do exist. So just because I can't see some things, does not mean those things do not exist. So God made me promises. There are some things I believe in God for. I don't have any earth realm evidence that I got those things. That's why faith is so important because faith is this spiritual commodity that many times, I like to use this example, it acts like that of a bridge. And it connects those things that I cannot see and causes them to come across the bridge of faith and manifest in my life. Did y'all get that? So faith is like that of a bridge that causes all those spiritual realities to come out of the spirit realm across the bridge of faith into my life so it is real faith is real the promises of God is real so let me push your faith with this you know there's a spiritual realm there is a physical realm spiritual realm is the mother of all the things that we see in the physical realm I'm not trying to be too deep I'm just trying to let you know how it is if there is something that exists in the physical realm, there is a mother of that in the spiritual realm. So if you, if you start off in faith, let me give an example. If you start off in faith and you are thinking, I'm in faith now, so I'm gonna make God do something. I'm gonna force God to do something then you're starting off really in a place of unbelief. Why you say that, Pastor? Because 
is already done. Faith doesn't cause cause God to 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 be forced to do something. No, no, no. And if you think I'm in faith, I'm gonna make God move. I, I, I ain't going to eat for seven days. So I'll make, no, God has already moved. And he's moved in what we call grace. He's already graced us with everything we would ever need. So faith will appropriate that which God has already done. So that's why Hebrew says, now faith. So faith has to be present tense. You know, a lot of folks say, well, you know, one I, I know one day God is going to do this. Uh, God is going to bless me. God is going to heal me. And you, you put it all in future tense. That is not faith. Faith is right now. Faith is now. Present tense. So you got to watch how you even talk when you're calling yourself you know, living by faith. You know, God is God is gonna do this one one day from I, I, I believe He'll do it by September. No, no, no. You gotta know it's already done. Faith is something that has already happened. God has already provided it, called grace. And now it's my faith, information from God that tells me what I need to do based on what God has already done. And I bring that to pass in my life. This is critical if you're going to really be living by faith. It is real, it's my, it's my, it's my booster shot to you. Faith is real. The thing you're believing for is real. God is real. Jesus is real. Holy Ghost and power from God is real. Not something that you're just shooting in the dark at. Well, I hope. No, 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 no. It's real. And you just have to continue, as the Bible said, fight the good fight of faith. You can't quit. You can't give up. You got to know that which you are believing God for is existing even though I cannot right now prove it in the physical realm. So that brings me to my last point today in this faith booster session. So when I'm in faith, I got to have some expectation from God. And there's several expectations that we, we can be living and expecting from God. And one is really a word from God. Yeah, you need a word from God. Yeah. The situation you're in, the condition you're in, the circumstance you're in, you need a word from God. And see, when you get a word from God, he, that word would give you advanced information on what God has already done and what it is you need to do. You need a word from God. We said years ago, and I believe it's still true and worth repeating today, one word from God. Don't let me get happy to get out the seat now. One word from God can change your life. I hope you heard me. One word from God. He got, he got millions of word, words. The Bible's got 1,189 chapters in it. 37,763 verses in it. One word from God can change your life. Are you listening to me? But not only are you expecting a word of God, you, you can expect a plan of God. That, that's, that's important. God works with plans. What, what are your plans? We're still in the early part of 2022. What you believe in God for? Pastor, I believe in God for this. And, yeah, and it exists. I just told you it's real. What's your plan? What is your plan? God works with plans. I, I, I want to lose some weight. What's your plan? What's your plan? And not only do you need a word from God, you need a plan of action. You can expect the favor of God. 
I love that one. And the favor of God is all about the willingness of others to use their power, their ability, their influence to help you. God can raise up somebody to help you. That's what favor is all about. Somebody else being a blessing to you. Some can give you a new book with good information on you. Somebody can give you an opportunity that you can pass through. All of that involves favor. And then uh, another expectation. So we got get a word from God, a plan of action, favor of God. I'm expecting all of this. I'm expecting strength to endure till change comes. I can expect God to give me some strength. I'm going through some, some things. I don't like what I'm going through. I believe in you, God, to bring me out of it. I know I'm out by faith, but I need strength to endure until change comes. And then finally, I believe God for a miracle. I, I, I still believe God for a miracle. God is a miracle working God. So there you have it today on this faith booster. Faith is real. The thing you believe in God for does exist. Even though you may not physically be able to put your hands on it. It exists. But as you use faith, as you take the information that God gives you and act out on it, faith will be like that of a bridge and will go and get that which you can't see and bring it into existence. Praise God. God bless you. I hope you got something out of that particular faith booster on tonight. Now, if you are here on this platform with me today, I need to talk to those of you who have never ever given your life to the Lord. This is so important. If you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God, but I want to be right with God. I'm not in right relationship with God, but I want to be in right relationship with God. I don't even, I don't even know if I would die tonight if heaven would be my home. I'm, I'm not sure, but I want to be sure. But let me just talk to you for the next couple of minutes. It won't take long. Jesus is here to help you. All of that not knowing can go away in the next couple of minutes. Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to save you. Jesus came to rescue you. Tired of being tired, sick of being sick. Come on. Time to make a change. Brand new year, 2022. You don't want to go through the same stuff you went through last year. I know you want to change. And the power of God, if you just believe on his son Jesus, the power of God can come in your life and change you, can give you a total makeover. So if you say, Pastor, I'm not right with God, but I want to be. I'm not in right standing with God, but I want to be in right standing with God. I'm not sure if I would die tonight if heaven would be my home, but I want to be sure. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the time out and just do this prayer with me. Say this prayer with me right now. Repeat after me, say, Father, I know without Jesus, I am totally lost. And now tonight, I ask Jesus to come into my life. Yes, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And that he died for my sins. And he rose again. And I believe that with my heart. And I speak it out of my mouth. That now I make Jesus my Lord. And right now. I am saved. Say it again. I am saved. Praise God. If you say, said that for the very first time and you really meant it, 
you're saved. Next step, you got to get into a church that's going to teach you the word of God. I want to be the first one to welcome you into the body of Christ, into the family of God. But next step now, get into the church. Get into the church. If you're in the Chicago land area, we would love to have you at Morning View World Church. I would love to be your pastor. I would love to teach you the word of God in a simple and understandable way. So now that you're saved, here's what I need you to do. Give us an email. Send us an email at morningviewwordchurch at comcast.net. Give us your name, some information where we can reach out to you, share some things with you. But again, you say, right now, I don't look say, it's okay, you say. All right, so God bless you. Thank God for you. On the screen will come ways that you will give because I want you to give on tonight by Cash App, by Givelify, they will put that on the screen. So God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Remember Jesus is Lord. Share this. Let somebody know faith is real. Bye now. Love you much.